Express Printing of Port St. Lucie is proud to present Startup Talk from Indian River State College. You see, Express Printing in Kings Plaza in Port St. Lucie is a one-stop shop for entrepreneurs throughout the Treasure Coast. Whether you're starting a business or building one, folks at Express Printing can offer insight on how to separate you from your competition. Let Express Printing help you rebrand your business as well. The backbone of America is its entrepreneurial spirit, shared by Indian River State College and Express Printing on US-1, south of Prima Vista in Port St. Lucie. Express Printing, 878-7975. That's 878-7975. Express Printing, just south of Prima Vista on US-1. Look for the red sign that says, we come to you. Do you own a small business in Martin County? If so, are you looking to expand, grow, or accelerate that business? Would you like the opportunity for training in the areas of management, supervision, social media, finance, marketing, or customer service? If the answer is yes, then you should apply to become part of the Martin County Business Accelerator Training Program. Sponsored by the Business Development Board of Martin County and Indian River State College, this program will provide business counseling technical assistance, and training for small business owners. The program will consist of one class per week for 12 weeks, all courses being held in the evenings at Indian River State College's Martin County campus. Participants who successfully complete the course will be eligible to apply for a small business micro-grant through the program. Do not miss this opportunity to expand, grow, and accelerate your business. For more information, contact the Business Development Board at 772-221-1380. The Business Accelerator Program Brought to you by Martin County, the Business Development Board of Martin County, and Any River State College. It's that time of year again for IRSC Summer Boys Basketball Camps for Young Players. Hi, I'm Charles Wilson, head coach of your pioneers. Learn the fundamentals with three basketball camps featuring one week of fundamentals, one week of shooting, plus a big man point guard camp. It will run from June 6th through the 24th for players ages 7 to 19. For registration and information about IRSC Summer Boys Basketball Camps, visit irsc.edu slash summer camps or email me, cfwilson at irsc.edu. You're listening to WSTU Stewart. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. Pleasant good evening. It's time for Startup Talk with Tom Kindred from IRSC. Good evening, Greg. How are you this evening? Doing very well. I want to welcome everyone to another segment of Startup Talk, the show designed to assist and help Treasure and Research Coast residents who want to start, grow, or accelerate their business. And as I always say, what a great place it is to own and operate a business along the beautiful Research and Treasure Coast. We will spend time during our hour together this evening to highlight and create awareness regarding the very powerful and robust business assistance and support programs which exist right here in our community at our very own Indian River State College offered through the Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute. I am Tom Kindred and I have the privilege to serve the business community as the director of the Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute. And our show this evening is powered by the Small Business Development Center at IRSC and our friends at Express Printing of Port St. Lucie. Greg, how are you this evening? Doing well. I uh, I heard there uh, prior to the uh, to our going on the air, I heard our coach uh, Charlie Wilson. Yes, basketball camp. Basketball camp. So yep. man, uh, we're we're going to talk about camps tonight. So it cool. kind of uh, was a was a good lead into our camp. Uh, that'll be uh, that's pretty interesting. I I guess. Um, I guess IRSC does. I need to probably invite uh, some of those coaches on. They've all got camps, I'm sure. We got well, baseball I, camps and I, basketball I camps. There'll and, be a ladies' uh, girls right. Vo- camp as volleyball well. Volleyball camp, and volleyball camps. You okay. bet. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll have to uh, maybe we'll have a have a big camp night. Uh, we'll uh, bring all the coaches on and talk about their camps. There. Yeah. yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. That would be very cool. Uh, so speaking of camps, uh, that's our uh, part of our subject tonight, and uh, we are fortunate tonight to have with us again. She has been on the show before, uh, but we are fortunate to have with us tonight uh, a young lady who represents a very unique program uh, at Indian River State College, the Laser Tech Program. Uh, 
uh, photonics and robotics programs, and uh, it is Miss Natalia Chetsnov. Oh, see, I, I did it. I, I was going to get it. I was going to get it. Okay, one more try. Uh, oh, Chetnovskaya. <laughs> Chetnovskaya. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was so close. I was so close to getting that. Oh, you know, Take three. All right, all right go, go go ahead, Natalia. Pronounce the last name. Well, that would be Natalia Chekhovska and Chevolska. Okay, See, there you go. Now I've got very it. simple, Tom. <laughs> no, I, I think well, she's just she's just Natalia to me. That's all. That's right. She's, she's from just, Eastern Port St. Louis. That's right. She'll always right. just be oh. Natalia to me. <laughs> uh, Natalia is going to talk tonight about the uh, the laser tech program. Uh, Natalia was on the show. Um, you know, time flies when you're having fun, Greg. I can't believe how long we've been doing this show. But I'm pretty sure uh, when I worked on uh, the interview uh, tonight, I'm, I, I, I number these shows. So I think we're on episode 50. Wow. Yeah. So so episode 50. But you were... Uh, they said it wouldn't last. That's right. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Natalia was on the show a number of uh, months ago when we actually did the show live from the Kite Center uh, for the International Year of Light event. Spectacular event. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely Incredible event. So, yeah. So, Natalia's going to talk a little bit about that. So, again, welcome to the show, Natalia. Thank you. And I promise I will not... Um, I will not try to pronounce your last name again yeah. and, and ruin it. We'll, I'll just yeah, let you do just it. Stick with okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're going to talk about laser tech and we're going to talk about uh, the program itself. And it's a very unique program, uh, great offering in our community, uh, incredible facilities, uh, incredible degree programs in the program. And uh, but then most, uh, you know, importantly, we're going to talk about her. Uh, and Laser Tech's uh, summer camp program, a very unique ah. for young people in our community. Very cool. All right. So before we start that, real quickly, I want to um, just highlight a couple of upcoming, I think we got some great upcoming um, trainings. And, you know, Greg, you came, and I really appreciate, but you came to the uh, SPDC Open House. You spent, uh, you were there the whole time, were you not? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's free food. You need to be there. That's right. We had free breakfast and free lunch. Uh, that's <laughs> it right. Was you, a great event. Yeah, it, re- it really was. And I was very pleased with the event, very pleased with the turnout. And, you know, as I looked out into the crowd, uh, what was really interesting was a lot of people down at their, their, their notes and taking notes. And so I was very impressed. Uh, you know, a lot of times I think. Uh, you know, sometimes you try to give people too much information in too short a time, and I think we really had the right amount of information in the right amount of time, and and got everybody back out to work at after lunch. And oh yeah, so and the SBA book. Uh, you know, I was sitting at home just kind of thumbing through that. I had no idea that they do as much as they do. Yeah, d- well, and SBA. look at the number. Look at the number. I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to quote now, but but. But you know he they set a record this past year for loan volume. Yeah, yeah. in our marketplace. Yeah, that's what you're saying. And you know people don't, and I don't think again. I, I we say this all the time, and the, the, you know the purpose of our radio show tonight is to is to create awareness about what's going on. But you know I don't think a lot of people really realize that we have an SBA office here, and Lonnie, uh, Koyama, is located and stationed right here. Uh, along the Treasure Coast. So we have an SBA representative right here along the Treasure Coast. Because you and know then, why he's here. Why is that? Got tired of shoveling. <laughs> is that where Lonnie's from? That's, Lonnie's been on the show with us, too. Yeah. Yeah, Lonnie's from Colorado. Um, and then, you know, what was so interesting was we had, there was, what, seven folks on the banking panel. Yes. And it, what, what I thought was, what really got me was, all seven banks represented all did different types of loans. So there was that much diversity in the loan uh, you know, offerings through the SBA. Yeah, the last two were very interesting. The Axion and... Yeah. 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 But, so, you know, if the credit scores aren't quite what a bank needs, right. then you can utilize the alternative folks there, and they right. work great. Yeah, you had... Uh, we had... Um, Oh, what were who who was I'm um, trying to think uh oh the bank uh the one with the clam shell, the snail shell. Ocalina. Uh, yeah, Ocalina. Ocalina Bank was there, T D was there. Yep. Um 
who else did we have on that panel? Was that were those the two banks? And then Florida First Capital was there. Yes, Axion was there. Um, so just really an impressive uh, day. So you know what I'm going to do with that event, Greg? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to be like an absolute circus. I'm going to package that program up, and we're going to take that program to every campus. Nice. That's what I'm going to do. Nice. Yep. Yeah. We're going to go. We're going to go to Martin County, the Chastain campus. We're going to do that program. We're going to go to Okeechobee, and we're going to go up to Vero. I'm going to take that show on the road. It was really a good event. So, yeah. If the banks, yeah. uh, if the bankers uh, have time, you yeah. know, and and what I thought was good too is um, that the folks in the crowd. Uh, you talk about being engaged. We're all taking notes. I know. And I know. and, and uh, they were. Great questions. Yeah, it was, it was really a good day. Were. Yeah, and immediately, a couple of, of the folks that owned and operated businesses or wanted to start a business immediately they stayed late. They they um, hooked up with a consultant and got signed up. So it, it was just a good day. So I appreciate your support of that, and I appreciate the radio station's support of that. And so it was a good day. So and a good event. And uh, I think uh, my goal is to take that show now on the road. Yeah. So with that, real quickly, let me cover a couple of upcoming uh, uh, events. Uh, good, good stuff. Credit reporting for small business will take place on, um, what is the date today? Um, well, sorry, can't go to that one. <laughs> That's today. Class filled. That's right. <laughs> Uh, that is today. <laughs> nice. Um, we've got uh, introduction to blogging for business. Again, we've we've had Leanna Haig, a uh, great event. That's May 17th uh, through May the 19th. Um, again, uh, you know, uh, absolutely important for anyone who has a website, e-commerce site, to, to stay up with their blogging. So uh, introduction to blogging for business, that's May 18th through May the 19th over in Okeechobee. Uh, we've got business law for small business owners. Um, obviously, this uh, workshop does not attempt to make you an attorney, but rather to help you understand your rights and responsibilities and to explain how things work and should work in the area of legal structures, copyrights, trademarks, patents, commercial Who, leases. Who's teaching that pup? Uh, pr most likely, it will be a representative from SCORE who okay. uh, teaches that, that course. That's going to take place down at Chastain Campus in Stewart on May the 18th, Wednesday, uh, from 5 to 7.30 p.m. in the evening. Again, uh, no charge for that training, brought to you by SCORE and, um, and the SBDC. And then we've got sales training for small business owners. Um, do you and your staff need to brush up on your sales skills? Uh, this is the class that will help you learn to grow your revenue, increase your average sales, and close the sale. Uh, we also learn uh, how to help an irate customer create a better experience for your customer. Again, brought to you by SBA Score SBDC. That'll take place on May the 19th over at um, the Dixon Hendry campus in Okeechobee. And again, that was going to be taught by Lonnie Koyama, mm -hmm. our SBA uh, local rep. And it was good to see the uh, reps from Score. Uh, yeah, at the, at the panel as well. That's right. Uh, you know that. And score score is a good score is a great partner of ours, and score uh, score basically teaches all those courses for us, and so it's uh, it's been a great partnership, and um, and it works well for all of us. So, again, uh, you know, I tell folks all the time, and and, and Greg, you were there for my opening uh, remarks at the open house, but I tell people all the time that uh, back when I was in business, if I had taken the time to become engaged in and, and participate in these programs that are offered uh, here at Indy River State College, I am confident I could have been a better manager, owner, and operator. Uh, the college and its president, Dr. Massey, and the board of trustees have done an incredible job of building a very powerful one-stop shop for business assistance and support through what we call the Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute. Uh, we refer to it as the EDI, and the EDI is made up of that Small Business Development Center, the Incubation Program, and the Corporate and Community Training Institute. Uh, you can always get more information on these classes that I've talked about and other classes and courses coming up by visiting that irscbiz.com site and check out the events calendar. And as always, a big thank you to the SBDC and the consultants and the work they do for our local business community. And, you know, Greg, I was talking to um, our friend um, at the school board the other day, uh, Craig, mm -hmm. who runs the television station. And, you know, we have a we have a, a television version of this show, Startup Talk. Um, 
that airs. It's a monthly production. This is, the radio is weekly. I hope Natalia is on every issue of that she, show. She, uh, she has know. not made an appearance on oh, the TV show. Oh, come on. <laughs> of all the people that you've been bringing That's right. in here. That's right. Come Who on. am I to be on the TV? It really should be Natalia. That's right. That's exactly. Right. Um, but, you know, it was interesting the other day. <laughs> She's blushing. Uh, Greg and I uh, talked about, uh, you know, and, and what I'm going to do uh, next Thursday night is uh, I, we may talk a little bit about the TV show. And, and uh, all of our shows now, have, now that we've got, we've got eight episodes of that under our belt. And the latest episode uh, we filmed in Chicago. Cool. At the uh, National Association for Community College Entrepreneurship, we filmed it at their uh, 2016 Entrepreneurial Leadership Summit. So we had on the show with us the gentleman who was an original founder of Priceline.com, Jeff uh, Hoffman, and we had our very own Dr. Ed Massey. Very cool. Yeah, it was a great show. So I uh, next Thursday night, I'll uh, I'm going to have some schedules for for our marketplace, and I'll publicize the schedule because you got to see this episode of Startup Talk. It's well, a, it's a great episode. This is what your second real remote. The first was in uh, Houston. Houston, yeah, with we, the entre- with yeah. The entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. We we did we did one from Houston, the NACI annual conference, and now we went to Chicago and did one. Uh, for their leadership summit, but what great conversation though between Dr. Massey and and Jeff Hoffman. I mean, it was it was great. I just kind of sat back. <laughs> it was I didn't have much to do. I mean, they really uh, engaged in in conversation about uh, education and and entrepreneurship and the connection between those two. And and Jeff really had a he had a great comment about uh, you know how kids uh, you know always say well you know why do I need an education and why do I why do I need to go to school you know if I want to just be an entrepreneur great answer to that question and then dr massey did a great job of talking about you know the new role of of colleges in the entrepreneurial space and he does a whole presentation called act uh and you know entrepreneurs act so it it really was a a great a great episode of startup talk so so i'm going to bring our schedule and and uh and promote that a little bit and maybe everybody can get out there and watch it and uh see the show good all right. So with that, um, I have some time. I think we can get started before we move into our um, to our break. So so we're going to turn again to Natalia. Welcome again to the show, Natalia. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. So Natalia, um, talk to us a little bit about your background. Uh, obviously, you um, you were not born in Fort Pierce. Uh, with that accent. So talk to us a little bit about your path uh, to any River State College. How did you find your way here to uh, to the institution? I think it was a pretty uh, streamlined path here. Um, we moved, my husband and I, we moved here back in 2007 after living for about four years in the Bahamas. So clim- climate-wise, you know, it was not a big change. No. No. Um, culture-wise, well, yes. There was yeah. Where were you in the Bahamas? <laughs> Um, well, I have a really cool husband. So he works for for the Navy. He supports the Navy operation. There's yeah. a really, I'm, well, right. She, th- it's a double secret island, uh, Greg. Yeah. She can't tell you where she. I was she gonna was. say, wait a minute, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a really, it's just a t- testing range for the uh, for the Navy, U.S. Navy, and he okay. was supporting. He still supports the operation over there as an engineer, of course. You know, uh, it's kind of runs in the family. So we spent there for about four years, and after that, we decided that you know, time for us to move on. So he still commutes, poor thing, but uh, we moved to Georgia Coast, and then you know, pathway to Indian River State College was very logical. Uh, with my background in, in physics and advanced uh, advanced degree, you know, I had to apply it somewhere. So I That's thought right. I would serve the best for for the academic environment in the academic environment. Right. So hence, I end up being here. Nice. And your background is in physics, but you did a lot of work in the nuclear space, did you not? The nuclear power I space. I, I did. Um, what actually happened when I got a job, for, the first job at Indian River State College was a part-time professor, part-time instructor of physics and science-based technologies, and I was taking all kinds of professional development classes like crazy because, you know, being five years away from science, you almost feel like, you know, the life is behind you. <laughs> So I was taking all the classes, professional development classes, and moving on. And that professional development kind of secured me a job with uh, with the uh, nuclear 
it's, it's actually another NSF center called Regional Center for Nuclear Education and Training. Right. So I was there for about a year, uh, developing a workforce in the nuclear technician field uh, nationwide. And uh, here after that, we had right. that really great announcement that another NSF center was uh, awarded to Indian River State College, and I was invited to lead as a project manager now the development wow. of the uh, laser and fiber optics workforce in the southeast of the United States, of course. That's great. So. Yeah. That, that kind of um, leads into, uh, into the next question. Talk a little bit about this laser tech program that you, you, you are the lead uh, director of the program. Is that, is that was your... Well, I have a boss. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a, yeah, we all do. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I have a, I keep saying that I, I have, have lots. <laughs> uh, I, I, have, I have multiple. I have a really good yeah. boss, though, you know. I, uh, I'm really, really honored to work yeah. with Dr. Chris. Dr. Chris yeah. Panayoto is the principal investigator of that grant. He was the one who actually uh, ran and got this grant. It's a $3 million grant um, that is, again, awarded to Indian River State College. Uh, through the National Science Foundation program. Again, it's a very unique program called Advanced Technological Education Program. So um, the grant was awarded for four years, so we're approaching our next term of expansion, but we are very hoping, we're hoping a lot that we're gonna get another extension. But laser tech, again, is in unique in, a, in, its, in its structure, in its nature, because we pretty much look very coherently and cohesively at the development of the workforce in the photonics field or the laser and fiber optics field throughout the whole eight states in the southeast region. And of course we do it in a very comprehensive way. Um, whatever we do, we, but the one, only one thing with, that we don't do is dance. Everything else we do pretty much. Right. <laughs> it's a very comprehensive approach to building a pipeline and sustaining the pipeline of a fiber optics technicians. Wow. Oh. And amazing. again, so, so um, you're a separate center, and you collaborate with other colleges, but you are part of Indian River State College. You're within the, um, you know, within the, the you know, the, the institution here. Uh, your classrooms are there. You're, you're running curriculum. You're teaching people. So, so talk a little bit about your connection to Indian River State College. You, you kind of bring the outside world into the college, right? That would be exactly the way. Indian River State College is our home. That's where uh, our headquarters are. That's where our program, Indian River State program, is run from. But we are not limited just to Indian River State Ho College. We have the college network of about 20 different state and community colleges across the southeast. As a matter of fact, we just expanded nationwide. We got folks from the Washington State, Spokane Community College. Really? And joined okay. us recently. Um, Puerto Rico re joined us recently as well, their Photonics Institute. So we're kind of getting a little bit more outside of our established boundaries uh, of south southeast. We are turning into somewhat of a national center. Again, yeah. it's all driven by the need of the workforce development. So, and we're finding that that's where our work has to be done. Uh, right. It do it doesn't have to be uh, localized. It doesn't right. have to be regional. It has it has to go nationwide. Sure. What um, and and again, you you mentioned the NSF, mm -hmm. which stands for National Science. Tell us a little bit about with with NSF. How do they? What what role do they play in the laser? And and the same role, I guess, they play in RCNET, the right. the Regional Center for Nuclear Education and Training. Right. National Science Foundation um, is our is a funding organization for us. Um, so they're the one pretty much paying the bills, but. Um, they run a really, really successful program called ATE, or Advanced Technological Education Program. It's again, it's an NSF nationwide effort to bring and sustain and enrich a modern uh, workforce, wherever it is, nanotechnology, cybersecurity, geopositioning, or whatever, photonics, nanophotonics, new, um, new areas are kind of popping up. So, and they're doing nothing but trying to ensure that our kids, when they get out of the college, they actually can be employed in the modern world. So trying to educate, get a qualified workforce out there. So Laser Tech and RCNet are one of the 40 centers sponsored by NSF AT program. So one of them, as you mentioned, is, is focused on the nuclear education and training because it's another big field there. Nuclear forks do not do not only support the nuclear power plant operations; they also in the uh, 
waste area, radio, radioactive waste area. So right. there's a lot sure. of adjacent areas that they need to support. And some things that we even didn't realize, you know, like our groceries, they're all, it's some of the things that treated with nuclear, nuclear, nuclides actually, right. radioactive nuclides to preserve the freshness. So there has to be a, a radioactive, you know, some kind of environment established. So the arsenet is doing this great job so it's laser attack. We are we are cooperating a lot in many areas, in specifically the outreach, um, public awareness about new careers development. So, but uh, RSC yeah. is very proud of the fact that there are actually two regional yeah. centers established. I've I've been in a few, yeah, I've been in a few presentations with Dr. Massey. He's always you know makes it a point to talk about the two NSF centers and and uh, the work you guys are doing in laser tech and the work that that our uh, friends are doing at RCNet. So it is mm -hmm. great work. I got a chance to uh, go to Atlanta and speak to the RCNet group. Right, they have um, professional development. Yep, um, I, so I got to go up and of course what I spoke about was entrepreneurship and uh, talked about the tools and resources that we use to bring entrepreneurial skills into these nuclear classrooms because again that's a big part of all this now mm -hmm. is that you know you can train engineers but what what companies are looking for now are some you know folks with the with the engineering uh background with the engineering skill sets but they want them to think a little entrepreneurial sure okay. yeah think out of the box think out of the yeah. box yeah um you know, understand that, look for opportunities. You know, there's so often there's opportunities when, when people are working inside a corporate structure, there's an opportunity to spin off another company, spin off a product. So they want to start teaching employees to be on the lookout for that and understand those opportunities. So that's why there's an entrepreneurial element to all of it. Absolutely. So it, it's a, you know, it's a way of thinking. Anyway, I got to go to Atlanta. What an incredible group of people. I mean, we had we had educators there. We had people that were in the industry, folks that worked at nuclear power mm -hmm. plants. Mm -hmm. So it was a, it was really a great opportunity for me. And uh, we met at the uh, the headquarters for the uh, nuclear uh, agency that regulates the power plants there in NRC, Atlanta. Yeah, nuclear yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Great. Next time, we'll make sure that we invite you to our meeting so you can Ooh. talk. Ooh. So um, broadly about our that's right there you where go. is <laughs> where is the laser uh, group headquartered well um, you mean Puerto Rico I'm uh, hoping it's in Puerto nice. Rico <laughs> 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 no, we're here in Fort Pierce <laughs> that's right okay yeah um, but anyway, th th it, it was it was very interesting to go and and, mm -hmm. uh, and participate in that. What um, so talk talk about the degrees? I mean, someone can and this we talked about this the last time you were on the show, but someone can come now to any River State College and and get a talk to us about the degrees. I don't want to I don't want to say the wrong thing. So what can you get in your field of study? So the Indian River State College again is a very unique college that offers a very unique program. So under umbrella of Advanced Technology, uh, Technology Division, we offer an EET program, Electronics Engineering Technology Program. Electronics Engineering Technology Program is somewhat an old school, if you think about it. We've been offering the school for many, many, many years. What is new about it is the applications. If, you think, if we think about electronics today and electronics 10 years ago, so we don't we don't repair a TV right anymore. We don't go to the repair <laughs> shop anymore. <laughs> no. so, right. Uh, exactly. So the technicians are now different. Their skill set has to be different. Their knowledge about electronics has to be different. Now we're thinking about where the modern electronics is applied in. What kind of a systems? And of course, a lot of the systems are applied in things like automation, uh, advanced manufacturing. Right. It's all what is driven in today's consu consumers market. So, and we're finding that the skill set that now electronics engineering technologist has to have has to conclude the automation part and the photonics part. Photonics means um, photonics light based technologies or light based sciencing technologies. It's a long word that we just recently invented, and we're trying to use it and make sure that it kind of <laughs> sticks. <you know? laughs> but if you think about yeah. photonics, it's nothing but you know, electro optics and on steroids. There's really nothing exotic about it. And uh, hence, under the EET, we offer an institute called Robotics and Photonics Institute. And it's a two-year degree. It's an associate degree in science. It's a fast-paced, cohort-based. Cohort-based, it means that you're going to be working with your group of peers from day one to day Z, you know, until you graduate. Okay. So we're trying to kind of get that peer environment, you know, get a member team, team um, going right. on. 
ensure not only that they grow as a professionals within the team, but ensure that they actually complete. It helps us with the right. uh, recruitment and uh, uh, with pretty much trying to minimize attrition during the program as much as we can. Right. And we learned that that cohort environment actually facilitates that. Yeah, really so good they support each other. They they get to know each other, they so there's support. Together. Right. Exactly. We find a lot of that good, healthy peer pressure that actually moves people along and, right. and, um, and get them out of, of the school. And it's less than two years. You're out of there and you have a really nice skill set package that will enable you to get a degree or get a potential degree in advanced areas, if you would like to articulate your degree, or most likely our students, they go into the workforce. They can find the jobs within um, 100 miles easy here within the salary of 40 plus starting salaries. Now, can you get an advanced degree at IRSC? Do you have to go to another school? IRSC. For that? Yeah, you can. Well, we would love you to go to IRSC, of course, but we have also a network of other 20 colleges that are that already have an established program or working toward establishing a very healthy uh, program. Okay. They kind of, and IRSC is a pretty much a model for those because we have. IRC, that, that EET program within IRC is probably one of these rare animals out there that combine a really, really good curriculum, very healthy curriculum, very qualified professors. And what is more importantly, that program has an access to a very proactive advisory board, industry advisory board. So all of the learning objectives, everything that is taught during you know those two years of study, it's all dictated by the need of the industry. Industry comes and tells us, we would like your students to be efficient in uh, using fusion splicers, for example, for example, during your fiber optics class. So we do nothing but make sure that upon graduation from that class, they know how to use fusion splicer. So do you know how to use a fusion splicer there, Greg? I can't even yeah. use a tape <laughs> yeah. splicer. A lot of fusion <laughs> splicer. You would be surprised. They're really, really easy. You know, as a matter of fact, they're Listen really, to her. Right, it's really easy. easy. No, yeah. you have to take my word on that. You Absolute can, genius it's, here. It's, no, it's, it's really easy. The way modern technology does, it does all of the work for you nowadays. So I think that's where entrepreneurial will gonna, entrepreneurship will go in, into play where all of the tools we develop, they need to be custom friendly, they need to be right. user friendly, and they need to ensure that the work that is done uh, is done in the most efficient way, in the, mo in the most, it's not a correct word, in the fastest way. Right. <laughs> right? right. And that's where uh, we need those folks who understand the technology and they have those skills that you guys are uh, talking about. Right. Now, you uh, and you talked about, uh, you know, IRSC being very unique and, and uh, you know, rare in its uh, in, in the whole program. And and talk a little bit about the facilities at New York State oh, College. Boy. I mean, that's, you know, that's got to be just, you know, compared to others, I mean, really quite a differentiator, I would imagine. It's our pride and joy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one day, that TV show that you were talking about, yeah, you, we, we need to bring maybe a camera so we can do a roll. Okay, do a live there version. There you go. That's, I like that idea. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm going to write that one down. <laughs> one thing to describe, right? Another thing is to show um, state-of-the-art facilities that probably cannot be mimicked right now by any of the colleges in the state of Florida. We have, um, just in the Brown Center, we have three brand-new labs just recently opened two. Photonics Lab is one of them and that uh, pretty much embraces all of the laser-based technologies. Lasers, we have all kinds of lasers there, so maybe it would be a cool thing to show. Yeah. All of the optics over there, it's industry-graded optics, again, back to ensuring that the students, they have the skill set that industry wants. We purchased exactly what we acquired and through the partnership with uh, the industry, exactly equipment that the industry wanted. That's what we train our students on. Then we just recently established again with the help of PCS, Annexter, and Transition Networks, we established another lab called Fiber Optics. You probably, you guys know what Fiber Optics is. Uh, you know, because sure. we all we all use cell phones nowadays. We need the data. If we need the data transfer as fast as we can, right? Like our that. fiber optics in this station, it still has a hand crank on it. But <laughs> uh, that's, uh, no, oh, it's, <laughs> it's interesting you say that. You know, now okay, the the equipment in the labs. Yes. Now. Uh, Ask is who pays for that? Is is that part of the grant? Yes. Um, okay. 
We've actually been fortunate enough to have a really genius... Uh, did I tell you that I have a good boss? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yes, and we're, we're going to send him a copy of the show, Natalia. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, a great, a great relationship with the uh, National Science Foundation. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. actually a collection of grants that we were able to. It's not sure. just the grant, just one right, grant. Right. It's been the, the way Chris, Dr. Chris started the program, it was definitely just a table and probably laser pointer. How it's all started. Right. So uh, after that, it grew to something that is so so big and so right. high quality. You know, and I noticed the other day, now I'm no expert, but I, when I walked into one of the labs, there's a new sign that's uh, very bright and says, Danger, danger, Will Robbins. <laughs> yep. uh, so there's some sort of powerful laser in that room yep. now. So I, they don't even give me a key to that room now. So talk about, is that one of the things that you that's new and that you... It's a brand new baby, absolutely. We just established a high power laser lab. We have, if you kind of try to classify the uh, power out, uh, output of, of a laser, it goes from one to four, category one to four. One being the least dangerous, four being the most dangerous, the one that can cut and engrave and do all of the etching stuff. So we've got lasers, fiber lasers, and the AG lasers. Those are with the output that are consistent with the laser output of 3B. Pretty much it means that it can hurt you. If you put your f hand on that, it can hurt you. So those are high-power lasers that we would like our students to work on. The uniqueness of those lasers um, is that, uh, that at least one of them is fiber laser. It's a little box like this, you know, 10 by 10 maybe. Well, a little bit bigger than that. Right. But it generates so much energy, and the and energy is generated in a spectrum that you cannot see. It's in, in, called infrared. So... And most of the manufacturing companies, they use lasers in that spectrum, meaning that the very high or highly intense laser beam is not visible. How dangerous is that? Very dangerous. Wow. So, yeah. um, and, you got you to take me in there one day, Natalia. I haven't seen that one. That's... Well, we but you the, said no. She wouldn't the, trust you yeah. in that room. That's, <laughs> well, we'll put goggles on him. You know? Right. <laughs> just, just, uh, wow. Now. So say again, you said lasers are rated between 1 and 4, 4 being the most powerful. You said this is a 3B, is that? Yes, yeah, this okay. is going to be 3B. Wow, wow. And they're not really, you know, if you talk about, um, if you're playing with big boys, this is not going to really, they would just like, okay, 3B laser. We have, right. we have, now we have lasers that actually can create fusion. You know, they can put nuclei together. Um, so the ones that we have, of course, they're not in this category. They are probably a couple of watts of, uh, of an output, but it's enough for students to understand the safety, the laser safety, and the laser operation. You know, because operation has the uh, activities involved in that. So those are really high power lasers. A couple of them are donated by our industry partners. Some of them we were, acquired, we were able to acquire through the grant. But again, uh, not bragging, but it's probably the only one lab in Florida on the college level that has the capacity of those lasers. Nice. That's amazing. So. Wow. You know what amazed me is when Tom and I were there doing uh, the startup talk show from uh, the lobby there. Um, and, y of course, you guys had the event in the, mm -hmm. in the stadium seating area. And um, all the youngsters and middle schoolers mm -hmm. that we saw coming mm -hmm. to your event, I thought, wow, that's really cool because you're, you're really looking to the next generations, plural, yes. of coming into your program. And we actually found that going to high schools, and of course that's what we do, you know, bringing awareness to K through 12 is one of our major goals. So first couple of years, we actually were focusing on high school before we realized that, uh, wrong, we need to go as, uh, as early as elementary and, ki and uh, K through eight, you know, middle school, because we want them to establish their mindset toward taking classes that will prepare them successfully for college. Right. Sure. So making sure that their algebra is done, their math is done, you know, they take some kind of a physics class or science related class. So yeah, middle school right now is our major, major, major uh, focus. Yeah. Okay. With that, we're going to take a uh, quick break. We will be back to talk to Natalia about some great opportunities for young people this summer uh, to play with some of those lasers, maybe. So uh, stay tuned. This is Startup Talk. Do you own a small business in Martin County? If so, are you looking to expand, grow, or accelerate that business? 
Would you like the opportunity for training in the areas of management, supervision, marketing, or customer service? If the answer is yes, then you should apply to become part of the Martin County Business Accelerator Training Program. Sponsored by the Business Development Board of Martin County and Indian River State College, this program will provide counseling, technical assistance, and training for small business owners. The program will consist of one class per week for 12 weeks, all courses being held in the evenings at Indian River State College's Martin County campus. Participants who successfully complete the course will be eligible to apply for a small business micro-grant through the program. Do not miss this opportunity to expand, grow, and accelerate your business. For more information, contact the Business Development Board at 772 772- 221-1380. The Business Accelerator Program, brought to you by Martin County, the Business Development Board of Martin County, and Any River State College. Express Printing of Port St. Lucie is proud to present Startup Talk from Indian River State College. You see, Express Printing in Kings Plaza in Port St. Lucie is a one-stop shop for entrepreneurs throughout the Treasure Coast. Whether you're starting a business or building one, folks at Express Printing can offer insight on how to separate you from your competition. Let Express Printing help you rebrand your business as well. The backbone of America is its entrepreneurial spirit, shared by Indian River State College and Express Printing on US 1, south of Prima Vista in Port St. Lucie. Express Printing, 878-7975. That's 878-7975. Express Printing, just south of Prima Vista on US-1. Look for the red sign that says, we come to you. It's that time of year again for IRSC Summer Boys Basketball Camps for Young Players. Hi, I'm Charlie Wilson, head coach of your pioneers. Learn the fundamentals with three basketball camps featuring one week of fundamentals, one week of shooting, plus a big man point guard camp. Camps will run from June 6th through the 24th for players ages 7 to 19. For registration and information about IRSC Summer Boys Basketball Camps, visit irsc.edu slash summer camps or email me, cfwilson at irsc.edu. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. You're listening to WSTU Stewart. And we are back. This is Startup Talk. I am Tom Kindred from Indian River State College's Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute. And we have got with us our very good friend, uh, we uh, laser scientist Natalia. That, can I call you a laser scientist? Is that what you are? Yeah. I was gonna I, rocket scientist, but you're not actually a rocket scientist. You're a laser scientist. We are we are talking to uh, we are talking to Natalia. Keep digging tonight. that. Old yeah, I know. Pal. I keep going. <laughs> we um, we are talking to Natalia about a very unique program at New River State College. Um, laser Tech is what it's called. It is a uh, it's a grant program uh, funded by the National Science Foundation, and they are doing some good work in building a pipeline. Uh, a sustainable pipeline, we say, mm-hmm. of um, of folks that can support work in the laser and photonics industry. That, that would be correct. Good description. Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. Now, when we before we took the break, you were talking about that. You know, of course, at one time we only worried about college kids when they were college kids. Then we started saying, well, you know, maybe we should be reaching out into the high schools mm-hmm. to start preparing uh, young people. And now we've gone so far as to, well, maybe we should be reaching down into the youngest minds of our community in middle school and start preparing uh, middle schoolers for potential, you know, work in uh, in different fields. Right. So, so you've done some outreach. I, I think I've, I, you know, you and I talked um, earlier. I've walked by the photonics lab in the Brown Center every now and again, and I see all these uh, school teachers inside. Mm-hmm. So talk a little bit about what are you doing with the school teachers uh, when you've got them in the in the building? Um, well, as a matter of fact, we have another one coming up in May next next week. Okay. And what we do, it's a great partnership that we have established with the K through twelve. K through twelve, easier for me to say, community. Right. What we're again trying to bring, we're trying to bring the laser-based technologies into the science in in K through 12 lessons, and we do it through providing them with uh, kits, optic kits that we assemble on our own. So we have personnel that actually does nothing but um, develop and building the kits. That's wow. what I see Will doing. So yep. he so he's building all the kits, and then you give these kits to. Instructors, teachers in the school at, system. At no cost. Those who participated in oh, yeah. our uh, workshops. Okay. Well, in addition to those 
kids, we provide them with lesson plans. So we would like them to wow. be able to just open the book, understand what is required, right. and see how they can integrate it or infuse it in their already existing lesson plans. Nice. So in infusion, we kind of would like to vision infusion as easy, as streamlined as possible. Hence, okay. you know, all of those comprehensive tools for them, boxing, like a, with a bow type thing. What's been the reaction of the teachers that you work with? Very positive, because what we are learning uh, that the K through 12 is really uh, eager and hungry and thirsty for uh, professional development in the subject, within the subject. Um, districts that provide with a greater plenty of opportunities for them to develop on the pedagogical side, but the subject related professional development is not as ubiquitous. So uh, we offer those full days, content reach, hands-on workshops right. for teachers for free at no cost. As a matter of fact, we feed them, we provide them with coffee, the kid, with the kits and the lesson plans. So it's a very engaging environment wow. for them that they um, they very like and they give us a lot of positive feedback. I guess it's the comprehensiveness of the kits that or toolkits that we provide right. that uh, makes them the most valuable. Those workshops, the most yeah. valuable. Mm -hmm. All right, so so let's talk uh, about your actual camp opportunities for for young people this summer. You've got two camps running. Um, basically, camps start uh, June the sixth and run all the way through basically the end of June. So you've got four weeks worth of camps. Busy times ahead yes. of us. Yes. Okay. Now, um, you, you, two different offerings: uh, laser and fiber optics camp, and then a robotics and photonics camp. Right. The first very one. Very cool. <laughs> okay, so talk to us about the camps. So I'm very excited about it. It's our. Content. Students will be very engaged. Try it. And I guess we were just staying away from that. Well, not this year. This year, this year we decided, all right. Come on, get in the camp business with me, Natalia. All right. Listen <laughs> up, parents and grandparents. <laughs> That's right. Here we go. Yeah. So. We're starting June 6th, uh, we're going to offer a week-long 8 to 5, full day, summer camps for kids, uh, middle school, raising high school. Right. Ages 9 to 15. 9 to 15. Of course, mm -hmm. the ages are flexible. We'll be, again, grouping them based on the age preferences and everything else. But again, the idea behind them is for students to learn about these la laser-based technologies and, most importantly, have some kind of a activity, something that they build on their own, something that they design, develop. And part of it, they're actually going to build their own laser-enabled museum security system. So if you have seen something like Ocean 12 or any other uh, Mission Impossible, remember? Right. Laser, sure. Lasers. Oh, yeah. Right? So I'm going to be a bad guy. I'm going to be the one who's going to be uh, stealing their treasure. They're going to be building, soldering, and working with the power tools, building you know, their own laser wow. system and photo right. sensor. Photo sensor. It's, we call it integrated photo alarm system. So as a matter of fact, sometimes we call it a detector of darkness you know yeah. just to get it a little bit of that. <laughs> right so, I love it. so, that so is they're gonna awesome. they're gonna build it they're gonna create their own and laser enabled security system where treasure will be put again in the middle of that and natalia gonna be a bad guy she's gonna go and try to steal that and well after that it's a fair game you know if i can steal it well i got it if they don't get if i i fail then well Right. Back to the drawing board. So, so yep. they're so they're going to get to design, build, and actually probably take this home. They're going to wow. Going to be something that they can okay. take home, show it to their parents. Their own laser-enabled museum security system. Wow. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's not good. And they're going to get to work with the mirrors, the lenses, the lasers, the elect uh, electrical circuit boards. They're going to get to work with all that. Absolutely. All of the optical equipment going to be at their dispense. Okay. All of the power tools that we have. Going to, as a matter of fact, another cool thing that's going to happen to them. Of course, the system, all of the systems, they're not perfectly well designed, right? You have always have to do some kind of adjustments. And those adjustments this time are going to be made with 3D printing. So they will have an access to a 3D printer, call it, as a matter of fact, a Chula, a Fab Lab. Okay. And um, they're going to develop their own holder for a lens within the system, and they're going to 3D print their own systems and nice. custom make nice. their own stuff. All right, so that's your laser and fiber optics camp, and then two of the weeks are dedicated to robotics and photonics. Uh huh. With Arduino. Arduino. So that's actually a keyboard. Arduinos are uh, really cool things that uh, you probably will hear about them if you haven't yet. Those are little computers that can be 
usually used in industrial environment um, programmable logic controllers. They have a sophisticated name to them. It's a really tiny little brain that is put in some kind of industrial system that re enables you with atomize a process. You want something to move left, then right, then again left. Or, so you have to have some kind of a program right behind it. Right. So that's what Arduino kind of enables you to do. Nice. And it's okay. developed in, in Italy by Italian uh, folks available um, on the market. So software for those guys is actually for free. So we're gonna teach our kids how to code, how to program. It's gonna be C-based language. So they, they'll use a little bit of programming. And what they will do, they will use uh, Arduino boards or Arduino platforms to do a little bit of a photonics and robotics project. Um, they're gonna try to see how primary colors can be combined to create the secondary colors. And it's all gonna be done with, uh, yeah, with a uh, custom-made circuitry board that they're, gonna, uh, they're gonna build. They're gonna learn how that Arduino communicates with a computer and how computer communicates with that and how then it's all communicates with a third entity like you know the circuit board mm. and the LED light. Very nice. So uh, uh, discover Arduino programming language, download code from the PC to the Arduino, build electrical circuits, read schematics, and, and all kinds all of good stuff. Cool Unbelievable. Stuff. And again, they're going to get to build, design, a color mixing uh, you know, uh, board, some sort of color mixing board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. They're going to be multiple LEDs, and they're going to okay. try to manipulate those LEDs to achieve some cool colors. Pretty much what we got in okay. the new LED TVs. That's what, they'll, that's what they will mimic. <laughs> These are full-day camps, right? right? Ages 9 to 15. Right. Uh, 8 to 5. Yep. Uh, they'll get. Uh, are you going to give the poor kids a lunch break, uh, Natalia? Are you going to get a lunch break? Okay. If they want. Yeah. <laughs> they may not want to. Though. They may not want a lunch break. Yeah. Um, wow. So, um, how do you get more information on this camp? Where Where should parents and grandparents go? How do they get it? The easiest way would be just to go directly on our website, which is of course www.lasertech with a dash dot org. So that's L A S E R hyphen T E C dot org. Laser hyphen tech dot org. Perfect. Okay. And right there on the main landing page you will see the reference to the camp. Just click on that and it will give you elaborate a little bit more okay. on the content and the whole Now process. obviously limited seats, so you need to get on parents need to get on this fairly quickly, right? You first come first sir. Okay. Absolutely. All right, and you've uh, you so it's opened up now. They can go online and get registered. Absolutely. Okay. All right, um, and they're all everything will be held in the Brown Center, which is right there at the 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 back of main campus in Fort Pierce on Thirty Fifth Street. Right, beautiful okay. facilities, very safe facilities for kids. Um, okay, engaging environment for them. Yeah. Multiple labs that they're going to be working in, multiple tools that are going to be employed. Okay, so very exciting. Will they be? Really will they? They'll spend most of their day in the photonics lab there in the Brown Center. Well, then you'll uh, we'll make sure that they uh, they actually yeah. have multidisciplinary okay. kind of approach. Right. You know, they will go to the robotics lab. We're going to go to oh, that's right. uh, soldering can, lab. So go next door to the kite center yeah, in the robotics we're gonna, lab. We're going to move them around a little bit. So. Okay, all right. Again, uh, great work with all that you do, Natalia and, and uh, Dr. Chris uh, Panioto and and your whole staff, uh, Lauren, Will, uh, who am I forgetting? Uh, Nicole, Nikki. Nikki. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys got a great team uh, at Laser Tech, and, and you guys work hard too. I mean, you're uh, you're there you're there as long as I am, so that I know you're working hard. <laughs> yeah, we're very so, fortunate. Yeah, we're so um, good team. Yeah, good team. And um, and again, I, please everybody take note parents out there great great camp offerings uh through the brown center this year uh got the uh, we're on our third year the pioneer tech camp the computer coding camp too so we'll we'll talk about that in the coming weeks but but anyway great work natalia Congra congratulations on the launch of the camps and good luck with them and and with that uh we'll wrap it up tonight for this uh, segment of startup talk and thank everybody for joining us for for another segment and um you can always visit us at that irscbiz.com site. And with that, again, thank you, Greg, and our partners here at WPSL and WSTU. And with that, we'll talk to you next Thursday night on Startup Talk. Startup Talk, an exclusive WPSL, Port St. Lucie, and WSTU. Stewart, wonderful folks at Indian River State College.